Hey everyone, welcome to another Teach Review lesson. Uh, you can see that we are going to talk about two systems together, and that's because these two systems do not have a lot of changes in T7. Um, so it's going to be pretty short for each system, so we can definitely combine them. All right, now let's look at the um, tagimentary system first. Like I said, there's a very little change. So the learning objectives are still these three. Identify the structures in the system, know the functions for the structures, and of course the functions for the system um, overall as a whole. And also describe the role of the integumentary system in homeostasis. Basically how the integumentary system contributes to the body's regulation of temperature. I want to point out, even though the language is a little bit different, right? So in T7, they use a homeostasis instead of saying thermal regulation. Um, they still mean the same thing, okay? So don't be alarmed. Um, the topic is still the same. They just use a different um, term. If you look at my uh, video on the integumentary system, I think I spent um, a pretty good amount of time talking about the thermal regulation. Um, also, I have some practice questions in my uh, practice question book so that you can use those to practice if you want. All right, now I did notice that they introduced a new term in T7, which is uh, over here. So it's a, a gland, it's called uh, ceruminous gland. So these glands are accessory structures that produce ear wax right here and they are found in the dermis of the ear canal. So, so this is a new structure that was not in T6 study manual so I want to point out in case you see questions that have with this term so you know what these glands are right basically they produce ear wax. All right now in terms of the skeletal system again very little change same learning objectives um, you need to know the structures, functions of the structures, and functions of the entire system. And describe the relationship between the skeletal system and the muscular system. Now, I'm going to save a muscular system for another lesson. Because previously in T6, the muscular system is combined with the nervous system. And ATI called it neuromuscular system. But... I didn't think it was a good idea to combine those two before. And I'm glad to see that they finally uh, broke the lesson up to nervous system and muscular system. So I'll have a separate lesson on those two systems. So for here, uh, we're talking about the relationship between the skeletal system and the muscular system. And it's pretty easy, right? The muscles can contract and because they're attached to the bones, so they use the bones as levers, right? So when the muscles contract, they move the bones, and this is how the body generates movement. So that's the main relationship between those two. Um, terms I did not point out previously, so these are not new terms. They were in T6, but um, I realized I, I never uh, mentioned these two terms in my previous skeletal system review lesson. So. Um, I listed them here just in case you see any questions in T7. So uh, a lot of times the muscles work together, right? They work in tandem. Um, there will be a primer mover. That's the contracting muscle that generates force to uh, move certain bones. And the opposite, the other muscle of the pair will be an antagonist. That's the relaxing muscle. So it's almost like they're doing um, the opposite. So if you look at this diagram over here, um, the bottom or right part, this is, um, so this is the el elbow joint, right? When you flex the elbow joint, the biceps muscle is contracting and the triceps muscle is relaxed, right? So they work in tandem. And then when you extend the elbow joint, you can see now the biceps muscle is relaxed, right? And the triceps muscle is contracting. Uh, so that's kind of uh, what those two terms mean, right? The uh, muscles that are, the pair of muscles that are uh, doing kind of the opposite job when they move the bones. 
All right, now um, I want to use this opportunity to uh, provide a few practice questions. And then um, I made these questions in the new question format. So hopefully this will kind of get you used to the new question types on T7. All right, now for this question, you're going to have about 20 seconds, I think. Um, and this is arrange the following skin layers from superficial to deep. Let's get started. All right, arrange the layers from superficial to deep. So in order to answer this question correctly, you need to know what superficial and deep mean, right? Those are uh, directional terms. And you also need to know where these three layers are located, right? So from superficial to deep, that will be epidermis, B, and dermis, A, and then C, hypodermis, right? Epi means around, like on the surface, and hypo, that means below, right? So epidermis is going to be on the surface, most superficial layer, dermis next, and then hypodermis, that means this layer is below dermis. So that's going to be the deepest layer. All right, next question. Which of the following structure or structures is or are skin accessory structures? And you need to select all that apply. Hair follicles, that's the one of the correct answers. It's one of the accessory structures you would see in the skin. All right, B, sudoriferous gland, that's also a skin accessory structure. And basically that means sweat gland. It's just a fancy name for a sweat gland. And C, we just mentioned this one, right? Ceruminous gland, that's the gland in the dermis of the ear canal um, that uh, produces earwax. So C is also correct. D, tendon. No, tendon is not part of the skin. So the correct answer is A, B, and C. Okay, the next question is going to be an image question. So you will have uh, four different spots on the image. And then you're going to select the correct spot. Now, keep in mind that I don't have that fancy tool, right, for you to just click on um, a spot in the image. So I make it like A, B, C, D. So you will choose which one is the correct answer. OK, let's get started. All right, number three, identify the radius bone in the image below. And there is a, uh, some important information here. This is the right hand. And, and then you can see the thumb over here. So this side is going to be the lateral side and the other side is going to be the medial side, right? Okay, now, uh, so in order to answer this question, you also need to know the, all the bones in the body, right? So this is part of the requirement for um, the skeletal system. So A is going to be the humerus bone. Right? And then B is going to be the ulna bone, right? So ulna, there's a little bit piece here for ulna that kind of forms your elbow. And the C is 
radius. So C is the correct answer. So on T's, you would just you know click this spot right here. Okay, my pen is not working, but you know, right? C is the correct answer. And D is carpal, right? And you have a, a bunch of carpal bones in the wrist. All right. Okay, I think this is the last question. Right, yeah. Okay, good job, guys. I hope this is helpful. Um, if you need a more thorough review on those two body systems, you can check out my previous uh, videos. All right. Okay, I will see you next time.